Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Senior Football Final, Beat Senior Football Final 1990. Summerhill against Navan O'Mahony. Summerhill going for their sixth win. Navan O'Mahony's bidding for their 15th title, their fourth in a row. Today, of course, tinged with sadness for Navan O'Mahony, their first county final without Timmy Creven, tragically killed just a year ago. And what a fitting way to honour his memory than with a win. What more fitting way to honour his memory than with a win, or at least to contest the final in a manner befitting his memory. Brendan Cummins, the Mead PRO, has just announced that there is one train, one change on the Summerhill team. Number 16, Andrew Young, playing at left, right, left fullback. Firstly, let us run through both teams, starting with the champions, Navin O'Mahony's. In goals, Donald Smith. Right fullback, Brian Smith. In the centre, Alan Riley. And on the left, captain, Colm Ratty. The half-back line, former Cavan star, Breen O'Grady, at number five. In the centre, Alan's brother, Brian, wearing number six. And on the left, the former Fermanagh player, Barney Riley, at number seven. In the middle, the contrast of youth and experience. Playing in his 11th final, Joe Castles. And at number nine, the only O'Mahony's player making his debut today, Derek Doonan. The half-forward line, Colm Kane at number 10, the Flying Scotsman David Beggy at 11, and David Nelson at 12, making up the half-forward line. Finally, the full forward line. On the right, Finian Murtha. In the centre, Frankie McAvoy. And on the left, Michael Downs. The Summerhill team, in goals, Willie Ryan. Right full-back, Noel Young. In the centre, Terry Lines, and on the left, wearing number 16, With Andrew the Young. On the half-back line for Summerhill there, as Brendan Cummins exhorts the team to get into action. On the half-back line for Summerhill, Kieran Clavin at five, Porig Lines at six, and Charlotte Hughes at number seven. Midfield for Summerhill, number eight, Mick Lines, and number nine, Billy Shaw. The half-forward line for Summerhill, Number 10, Stephen McNally. The former Nobber player, Jerry McEntee at 11. And Eugene Gorry at 12. Full forward line for Summerhill. Captain John Lyons wearing number 13. Michael McDonnell at 14. And on the left, Robert Munley wearing number 15. The Summerhill team there just lining up for their photographs as the Navan men, led by Colm Ratty, take up their positions for the parade. Negative aspect from the weather point of view is of course that strong wind which is blowing diagonally across the field into the town end of the pitch. In the first half of the intermediate final Dunderry had the wind but played significantly better against the wind in the second half outscoring Dunboyne by 16 points to 1-7 in that final. Navan hoping for to emulate a feat that Summerhill achieved in the 1970s and win four titles in a row. Could possibly be going for six in a row, but the incidents surrounding their 1986 exit are now history and were put well behind by the achievements in recent years. A fine crowd, difficult to estimate how many are here in Park Talton today. I would say at least 5,000 people, possibly close on six. And so, led by St Mary's Silver Band, both teams start the parade. Summerhill led by John Lyons, and Navan O'Mahony is led by John's opposite number today, Colm Ratty. Joe Castles playing in his 11th senior final, hoping to score his record 8th win today, and thus go one ahead of his club mates, Harry and Patsy Ratty, who have 7 wins each, to their credit. Harry's son today, Colm, captaining the side. Referee for today is Vincent Lynch from Ballinlock. Vincent replacing the injured Kevin Campbell who was in a car accident during the week.
Mary Silver Band leading the parade there. Navalomani's eighth championship game of the season. By contrast, it's only Summerhill's fourth. Summerhill have not played a game in the last seven weeks, a competitive match that is, since their semi-final win over Walterstown, which was here on the 26th of August. By contrast, Navalomani's had a replay against Centralstown two weeks ago at Kells, where they scored an emphatic 10 points win. Will this lack of competitive edge tell against Summerhill? Well, the next 60 minutes or so will decide that. Both teams taking up their positions. John, John Lyons there going towards the referee. Colin Ratty being called over for the toss. The elements could play such a vital part in this game today. A very strong wind blowing into the town end of the pitch. And by my reckoning, it's blowing diagonally across the pitch, judging by the state of the flags. Minute silence for Kevin Johnson. round of applause there for the captain of the victorious Meath minor team and the McManus from Dunboyn. Players taking up the positions now for the national anthem prior to the big game. And we now arise for the national anthem. cheer for both sides, both sides very well supported here today. Omanis will have the benefit of whatever wind there is in the first half or whatever benefit the wind awards. As I say, it seems to be blowing diagonally across the pitch and that will make life very difficult for both teams. So the ceremonial throw-in having taken place, Vincent Lynch checks that everything is in order, looks to his linesman, then looks at his watch. He's ready to go and the 1990s county final is on. First to break are Navan O'Mahony's. Derek Doonan launches an attack in towards the full forward line. Out comes Terry Lyons with the ball, way blocked. Illegally so, says the referee. Free out. Frankie McAvoy not back far enough, so the referee brings the ball forward, 13 metres. Porig Lyons placing the ball on the ground for that free. to the Amani's 50 yard line. The ball breaks to Summerhill's Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw looks up, no support, so goes on his own, takes a shot, and well held by Donald Smith in the goals. Donald looking for some support, sees none, launches the one towards the 50 yard line. 
Ball breaks at the, on the Marty's 50 yard line. Jerry McEntee, first touch of the ball for him towards John Lyons. John Lyons, way blocked by Brian Smith. Gets his left footed shot in across the face of the goal and wide. The first wide of the game there for Summerhill for Captain John Lyons. Just over one minute gone. Donald Smith conceded no goals so far in this year's county championship and just two goals in competitive action for me this year. Surely a candidate for an all-star award. It'll be interesting to see where this kick lands. Well in towards the middle of the field. Ball breaks. No advantage to anyone but Barney Riley sends O'Mahony's on the attack. Picked up by Jarlath Hughes. Jarlath Hughes on his 50 yard line is fouled, says the referee. Free to Summerhill. Two frees in the early stages to Summerhill. Porig lines again. A short free. Kieran Clavin on the 70 yard line. Ball in towards the middle. No one getting it. Brino Grady decides to take control of the situation. Finds Derek Doonan. Derek Doonan's effort blocked down and the ball breaks to this side of the field where Willie Shaw has the ball. Willie Shaw looks for some support. Finds John Lyons. Can't control the ball. And Barney Riley again. Right footed towards the 50 yard line. Ball off Jarlath Hughes. Out over the line for a line ball to Navin O'Mahony's to be taken by Derek Doonan. Decides to bide his time. Well held there by David Nelson on this on the right hand side of the field. Looking for some support. Finds it in the shape of Finian Murtha. Left footed across towards Mickey Downs. Or to Mickey Downs' position. Yes, it is Mickey Downs. David Beggy on the ball, excuse me. Loses possession. Has a goal a second time and sends it over the bar. First score of the game there for David Beggy after just three minutes of play. One point to Navanamani's, no score to Summerhill. Navanamani's, favoured by the wind in this first half, will be hoping to establish a good foothold in this game by half time. Free there against Joe Castles, I think. Mick Lyons takes it quickly out of his hands towards Donald Smith. Donald Smith well in command of the situation. Out to the cornerback. Tackle there and the ball breaks. And it's in the back of the net. Mickey McDonald with a goal just after three and a half minutes play. A bad mistake by Donald Smith looking for his cornerback. Didn't give him the best of passes and the ball ended up in the back of the net courtesy of Mickey McDonald. Just when we remarked what a good campaign Donald Smith has had, he has conceded his first goal of the campaign. Four minutes gone. One goal to one point in favour of Summerhill. Jerry McIntyre, or Mick Lyons, falls over himself, but the ball comes forward again. Breen O'Grady tidying up, playing out to Barney Riley. Barney Riley chips it forward towards Joe Castles. Joe Castles holding onto the ball, looking for for someone to aim at. Sends the ball to the left and wide. First wide of the game for Navin O'Mahony's. A bad start there for Navin O'Mahony's to concede a goal while playing with the wind. And Summerhill grateful to accept the opportunity to settle them down in the early stages of this match. Jerry McEntee goes for the ball, loses it. Mick Lyons has a shot blocked down. The ball is there with Brian Riley. Looking for some support. Finds it in the shape of David Beggy. Launches another Romani's attack. The ball breaks to Mickey Downs on the 50-yard line. Mickey left footed. Has a shot blocked down. Referee decides that there has been an infringement. I think he's blowing for Romani's free. Yet he, yes, he is. Finian Murtha goes to collect the ball. Free into Navan Romani's. Just five minutes gone. Navin O'Mahony's trailing by two points. Michael Downs hoping to open his account in this county final. 
slots it straight and through over the crossbar, over the black spot. Navin O'Mahony's second point, just six minutes gone. breaks in the middle of the field coming forward on the right hand side of the field Brendan Riley chasing back for it fouled by Stephen McNally says referee Vincent Lynch free to Navan O'Mahony's Barney will take it himself out of the hands on the 50 yard line but finding a Summerhill player looks like Parry Glines from here into Kieran Clavin loses possession and picked up again by Joe Castles Joe Castles finds Derek Doonan Derek Doonan looking for Mickey Downs but instead of finds Finian Murtha Davy Nelson head high tackle referee had blown the whistle free into Navin O'Mahony's chance now for Michael Downs to level the scores a former Clare star who just almost exactly 11 years ago starred in a rare Clare victory in a National League tie against Meath on this very ground since then has gone on to serve Meath football and Navan O'Mahony's football for many years a right footed kick across the, the black spot and Navan O'Mahony's level after just seven and a half minutes of play So Navin O'Mahony's have cancelled out that early Mickey McDonald goal and are now back on level terms. <laughs> Trying this side of the field for a change, up goes Derek Doon and the ball breaks down to Colm Kane. Colm Kane finds David Beggy. David Beggy now in space. Still David Beggy has a shot across the face of the goal. Out in front of it is Terry Lyons. Terry fouled says the referee Vincent Lynch and a free out once again to Summerhill Terry Lyons first to that ball gained possession and was subsequently fouled Porrig Lyons with a free kick towards Breen O'Grady ball beats Breen O'Grady and ends up in the hands of Jarlath Hughes. Jarlath fouled by Derek Doonan, leaving the free kick to Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw, 70 yards out from the O'Mahony's goal, hits it right footed towards Brian Smith. Brian Smith gets control of it. Back to Breen O'Grady. Breen O'Grady out towards Derek Doonan. Derek Doonan hops once, hits it right footed down towards Colm Kane. Colm Kane gathers it a second time, looks up into the middle towards Michael Downs who comes out in front and sets up Finian Murtha now Finian Murtha 20 yards out tackled shoots and sends it over the bar first score for Finian Murtha sends him and he's back into the lead nine and a half minutes gone much to the light there of the Navan O'Mahony's support on the bank at the town end of the pitch Martin Coyne, Summerhill coach, gets up off his perch in the dugout, urging his troops into action. Into the middle it goes again. Cleanly held this time by Mick Lyons. Foul, says the referee. Mick takes the free himself. Ball breaks behind the backs. Alan Riley leading the chase. Mickey McDonald fails to get possession and the ball goes wide for the second wide for Summerhill. into the middle of the field once again 
beats all and sundry except David Beggy. David is fouled before he can escape the clutches of Jarlath Hughes. Takes the qu free quick himself towards Frankie McAvoy, who's broken inside Terry Lines. Frankie out in the corner. Lovely pick up there from Frankie McAvoy. Looks up, looking for support. Sends it into the middle. And the ball is with Mickey Downs. Mickey Downs challenged heavily there, but still sends the ball over the bar. Mickey Downs challenged by Noel Young but had the strength to break away from his man and send it left footed over the bar to stretch Navin O'Mahony's lead to five points to just that solitary goal from Summerhill. 11 minutes, 11 minutes and 12 seconds by my stopwatch gone in this first half but Navin O'Mahony's will need every score they can get in this half. The wind is still very strong and favouring Navin O'Mahony's as I say blowing diagonally across that pitch. The ball breaks into the middle of the field again and forward again towards Andrew Young. Andrew Young right footed down towards Brian Smith out in front of his man. Finds Colum Ratty left footed down towards David Beggy. David Beggy loses control of the ball. Porig lines gains possession despite being challenged by Finian Murtha. Porig still finds his brother Mick with that ball and the ball is towards, out towards Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald finds captain John Lyons. John Lyons out to Jerry McEntee. Jerry McEntee is fouled. 30 yards out from the Navan goal. Jerry leaving it to John Lyons, I would imagine. John Lyons, joint top scorer for Summerhill along with Robert Munley. Both players have scored 13 points. But two of John Lyons' scores have been goals. 270 score to date in this championship. Angling up for his first score. Brian O'Grady, shot blocked down with the ball breaks to Brian Smith. Brian Smith to Derek Doon and Derek Doon has his shot and turn blocked down by Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw has a second attempt and well held there by Donald Smith. Alan Riley out this side of the field towards David Nelson dropping back to help his defence. The ball breaking again in the middle of the field. Summerhill coming forward. Mick Lyons with the ball. Mick Lyons out towards Michael McDonald ahead of out ahead of Alan Riley. Alan Riley challenges Mickey McDonald, but the ball went off Michael McDonald and across the line for a line ball. To be taken by Alan, I think himself. Alan himself will take that ball towards Joe Castles. The ball breaks again in the middle of the field. David Nelson fails to get possession of that ball. Summerhill in possession. Mickey Lyons again looking for space to shoot Brendan Riley heavily challenged but still gets possession of, the, of that ball the ball comes towards Terry Lines, Porig Lines rather with, in possession crossing the halfway line looking for some support heavy tackle there by Derek Doonan fouls as the referee free to Summerhill Mick Lines facing up to take that free about 65 yards out Mick decides Yes, he decides to take it himself. Had a look around there to see would somebody else wish to take it, but Mick decides to take it himself. The ball comes towards Breen O'Grady. And back out towards David Beggy. David Beggy in possession, just crossing the halfway line, still going forward, looking for some support. Seeing none, still goes forward. Now he has something in the shape of Finian Murtha. Finian Murtha beats his man, Andrew Young, and has a goal. Left footed over the black spot and they're cheering there on the bank behind that town goal the core of Navanamani support there as usual behind that goal delighted by that effort from Finian Murtha just short of halfway through this first half 14 and a half minutes to be precise another score for Finian Murtha six points for Navanamani five points for Navanamani rather one goal for Summerhill Derek Doonan goes up, gets possession, beats two summer hill men, flicks the ball out to the far side of the field where Frankie McAvoy has come out to get possession, but nobody inside at full forward and makes a job very simple there for Summer Hill. Stephen McNally going for the ball, beaten by Brian Riley. Brian Riley looking for support. David or Frankie McAvoy playing very deep at the moment. Hits it across the field towards David Beggy. David Beggy shoots from about 50 yards out, the ball is still in play well held, well blocked down Colum Kane had his effort blocked down now the ball comes back to Frankie McAvoy, Frankie looking to try and have a goal shot blocked down again, Finian Murtha on the left boot 
Is it gone over? They're cheering behind the goals. Yes, the ball has gone over the bar. Another point for Finian Murtha. The last three scores have all come from courtesy of Finian Murtha's left boot. And so as we come up to the 16th minute of the first half, Navan Mahoney's stretched their lead to three points. Double scores, six points to one goal. But of course, one must remember that Navan are aided by that strong breeze. A very good kick out by Willie Ryan against the wind. Ball breaks to Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw is fouled by David Beggy. Vincent Lynch quick to blow up there. Mick Lyons taking the free. Alan Riley out in front of his man with gains possession. A long relieving clearance. And David Nelson under pressure loses possession of the ball there to Kieran Clavin. And he sends a long clearance but straight into the hands of Colm Ratty. Colm the captain. A poor clearance there from Colm, going straight into the hands of a Summerhill man. Jarlett finding Mickey MacDonald, playing out the field, finds Jerry McEntee. Jerry McEntee into the corner towards Robert Mullaney. Robert Mullaney fails to gain possession and now Colm Ratty picks up, doing a cleaning up operation there for O'Mahony's and a long clearance again finds Finian Murtha. Finian loses possession, gains it a second time. Now David Beggy's in the clear, crosses the halfway line. Chips the ball in towards Frankie McAvoy. Frankie gains possession, turns. He is tackled by Terry Lyons. The referee is blown for a free. I would imagine it's just a t an ordinary 21 yards free. He was a bit far out. I think it would be a bit optimistic looking for a penalty in that position. A free for Navin a chance to edge further in front. Finian Murtha going to take it. Left footed. Finian, who scored the last three points in this game. Willie Shaw there getting a swig from the bottle. While Finian tees up the ball. Vincent Lynch coming back out towards the middle of the field, confidently expecting that. Sorry, we have an injury up here at the 21 yard line. Jack Finn there attending the Naval Mountains player. Can't make out at the moment who it is. It looks like Brian Smith down injured. Brian Smith, I would imagine, is down injured. Hopefully nothing too serious. Eighteen minutes gone in the game. No doubt Vincent Lynch will have to add on a few extra seconds here. Extra seconds that could be very valuable towards Navin O'Mahony's score in the first half. Brian is okay. Been helped up there by Joe Tallon, the Navan O'Mahony's trainer. Joe has done such a, such a fine job in getting these boys into physical, fine physical shape for this game. Brian resumes his position. And Vincent Lynch comes back up to supervise events at the far end of the field. So, coming up on 19, 19 minutes in the first half, Finian about to take the 21 yards free. And no trouble to Finian. Stretching Navin's lead to four points. And the wind as strong as ever. Well held by Mick Lyons in the middle of the field. Launches another Summerhill attack. Mickey McDonald comes out ahead of Alan Riley. Is fouled, says Vincent Lynch. Just 40 yards out from the Navin goal. Free to be taken by Willie Shaw. Grandson of former Mead the Great, Willie Shaw. Now, yes, I think he was wanted in his rights. Even though it would seem harsh and... Billy Shaw to give away that free but Jerry McEntee gaining possession and sending it over the bar to give get his first score of the game first score for Jerry McEntee first point for Summerhill first score in 17 minutes for Summerhill just three points in it again yes in this day and age under the new rules you're not allowed to tee up the ball you just place the ball on the ground but not allowed to tee it up as in former years and Vincent Lynch rightly so penalising Summerhill but 
everything worked out to their advantage. The, Jerry McIntyre scoring that point. Well held again by Mick Lyons in the centre of the field. Trying to burst his way past Derek Doonan. Legally so, I thought, myself, I thought he had barged his way after the free had been given to him. But referee decides to let it go and give the free to Summerhill. The ball with Mickey MacDonald, 14 yards out, trying to get past Alan Riley. Challenged by Alan Riley. Legally so, says the referee. And that's okay with the Navin supporters. Joel Smith teeing the ball up again. Another wide for Summerhill. They're third and all. Just nine minutes now to the half time whistle. Plus whatever injury time Vincent Lynch allows. Damien Doonan. Derek Doonan, rather. Stephen McNally with the ball. Crosses the 50 yard line. No support, so he keeps going towards the 21. Looks for support, gets it in the shape of Jerry McEntee. Jerry McEntee across, but Brian Smith intercepts. Brian Smith coming 30 yards out from the goal. Tackled illegally, it would seem, but the referee, having none of it, decides now to give a free to Navin O'Mahony's. Joe there. Foul takes the free himself towards the 70 yard line, but the ball with Summerhill again. Jerry McEntee in the middle of the field, having a fine game for Summerhill. Hits it into the far corner, but who's there to collect it? Yes, Brian Smith once again. Finds his captain column, who in turn finds Alan Riley. Alan Riley finds Breen O'Grady, does he? But into intercept is John Lyons, I think. But the ball breaks towards Willie Shaw again. Too much short passing in the O'Matney's defence. Porrick lines up, supporting his attack. Has a shot, but the shot goes to the right and wide. Maybe the more direct approach would have been better there from an Avon point of view. But no harm came in the end as Pori Lines' effort from about 30 yards went wide. Jack Moyles admonishing some of the defenders there. Jack Moyles, the Navin trainer, hoping to complete his term of office with a win. Ball breaking in the middle of the field. And Jerry McEntee once again wins possession, wins a free. Places it, leaving it to Mick Lyons to take. The ball breaking towards Brian Smith. Brian Smith collects ahead of Michael McDonald. Challenged by Michael McDonald. Still finds Alan Riley. Alan Riley toe taps once. A long clearance from Alan Riley towards David Nelson. Ball breaks behind David Nelson. Noel Young goes to pick up. Noel Young loses possession. And the ball is with. Summerhill once again. Summerhill on their own 21 yard line. Foul, says referee Vincent Lynch. Terry places the ball on the ground. Terry Lyons, brother of Mick and Porig, taking the free from the ground from the 21 yard line. Ball breaks in the middle of the field. David Nelson gains possession 50 yards out. Bundled out over the line. Illegally so, says the referee. Not going down too well with the Summerhill supporters on the bank opposite us. A very poor kick there towards Stephen McDonald, uh, McNally. The pop beats him. And Finian Murtha gains possession. Finian going forward with the ball. Finds Frankie McAvoy. Frankie McAvoy looks, finds Finian again. Finian towards David Beggy. David Beggy right footed across the face of the goal too far beyond Michael Downs and wide just the second wide for Navin O'Mahony's in this game by my reckoning but surely a three point advantage in the interval in these conditions would not be enough for Navin O'Mahony's still it's all there to be played for Ball on the far side of the field, very close to the sideline, out over the sideline, says the ump linesman. Line ball to Navin O'Mahony's. Joe Castles to take it. Joe towards the centre. Out in front of everybody is Colin Kane. Left footed and over the bar. A fine point there by Colin Kane, taking it on the turn and sending it left footed over the bar.
first score for Navin Omani is in 10 minutes. A valuable point. As we come up to the half-time whistle. Just over four minutes to go, plus whatever injury time referee Vincent Lynch allows. Ball with David Beggy. Finds his way blocked. Referee blows. Decides it was an illegal challenge. Gives a free to Navin O'Mahony. Brian Riley, having a quiet game so far, places the ball for the free. Brian, who has a very good record from scoring points from long range, from free kicks and 50s. A bit too optimistic to hope that he would score from here, but surely it should land in around the house. Away out towards the left, finding Frankie McAvoy, first out to meet that ball. Frankie shoots from about 30 yards out. The ball going to the right, Still not gone over the line. Ball breaks out towards David Nelson. David Nelson left footed across into the middle. Jerry McEntee back to help out his defence. Jerry wins possession, hops once, finds his way blocked by Frankie McAvoy, but left footed towards Breen O'Grady. Breen O'Grady gathers the ball under pressure out to this side of the field towards David Nelson. David Nelson about 50 yards out from the Summerhill goal. Into the middle. Ball breaks, hops over, backs and forwards, but into the hands of Mickey Downs. Mickey Downs has a go himself, right footed. An optimistic cheer there from the crowd at the back of that goal, but the ball goes to the right and wide. About two and a half minutes or so to go to the half-time whistle. Navin and is leading by eight points to a goal in one. A tragic mix-up in the defence, giving Summerhill their goal after three minutes and leaving them very much in the hunt at the halfway stage. Ball into the middle once again, over backs over midfield, all midfield men, but comes in, nobody gaining possession, free to Summer Hills is Vincent Lynch. Mixed lines, places the ball on the ground, about 70 yards out from the Navin goal. A ball dropping behind, backs and forwards, out over the line and wide, a despairing dive there of Michael McDonald, excellently policed by Alan Riley. Just under two minutes to go now to the half-time whistle. Ball dropping short of halfway line, beating all the men in the middle. Barney Riley tries to gain possession kicks it right footed, David Beggy catches it, tries to catch it one handed, gets it a second time, into the middle, towards Colum Kane and Jared Hughes, goalie comes out, the ball breaks to Finian Murtha, has a blast, well blocked by Willie Ryan, well blocked, well saved the ball is not cleared yet Colum Kane has possession referee calling back the play what's he giving, a free in or a free out, or is he hopping the ball an excellent save there by Willie Ryan from Colum Kane, who was put in the clear following that long delivery from David Beggy. Now, referee speaking to Mick Lyons, much to the derision of the Summerhill supporters. Ball being placed by Michael Downs. A chance to notch up another Omani's point, which he does, make no mistake. Michael Downs, second point of this first half to give Navin O'Mahony's a five-point lead as we come up to the 30th minute of this first half. Ball in the middle of the field. A free pushing, says the referee. A be amused. Michael Downs asking the referee what's it all about. Another free for Mick Lyons to take. A good kick against the wind, in towards the square where Jerry McEntee outfields the Navin defence, shoots left footed and shoots wide. A good catch there by Jerry McEntee, shooting it on the turn with his left boot, but sending it wide. Just over 30 seconds of injury time played. I wouldn't imagine more than a minute of injury time will be played in this first half. 
Vincent calls for the ball and at half, half time here in the county final Omahuna 9 points Drumsaru a goal in 1 so despite having the wind in this first half Navanamani is going 5 points up will it be enough? well the second half will tell that wind is very strong as I say blowing diagonally across the field and will favour Summerhill in this second half so a lot of work there for the man and his mentors at half time for Brian Murtha and his two selectors Donald Smith last, last to leave the pitch and as the St Mary's Silver Band come on the field at half time to entertain the teams we leave you with the half time score Navan O'Mahony's 9 points Summerhill a goal and a point St Mary's Silver Band leaving the field to the applause of the crowd here at Park Talton Vincent Lynch and both teams ready to resume in the second half Summerhill playing with the wind in the second half very strong breeze blowing into the town goal no changes on either side at half time don't notice any major positional changes Jerry McEntee back at centre forward facing up to Brian Riley Vincent Lynch checking his watch and 30 minutes between Navarro Mahoney's and a possible fourth title in a row the game is on first to show is Mick Lyons loses possession to David Beggy high kick him in against the wind over towards Finian Murtha Finian Murtha under the ball gains possession on the 14 yard line way blocked by Andrew Young Finian back towards David Nelson a very dangerous tackle there on David Nelson the boot out is the notebook out David Nelson, heavy tackle there from a Summerhill defender. From, was it Porrig Lines? I'm not quite sure. Yes, Porrig Lines being spoken to by the referee. Joe Tallon out with the magic bottle. And Jack Finn in close pursuit. Hopefully David is okay. Summerhill substitute warming up here in front of me. Peter Nangle, it would seem. Peter Nangle warming up for Summerhill. Meanwhile, David Nelson being attended to by Joe Tallon. Finian Murtha squaring up to take the free against the wind. The wind blowing from left to right as he looks at the hospital end. So presumably he will aim for the left hand post. A great score by Finian Murtha against the wind. Just over a minute gone. First score of the second half for Navan O'Mahony. A great start against that wind to get the first score. What a psychological start to Navan O'Mahony. Five points, or is it six for Finian in this county final? Top score for Navan O'Mahony to date. Kick out against the wind by Willie Ryan. Drops in the middle of the field. Derek Doonan claims possession sends it right footed down the far side of the field towards Finian Murtha out in front of Andrew Young having a very good game Finian Murtha still holds on to possession till he finds an extra man he finds it in the shape of Derek Doonan who in turn finds Joe Castles on the overlap Joe in the middle but nobody there to collect it but Terry Lyons Terry Lyons ahead of his defender fellow defender Noel Young flicked ahead by Willie Shaw past Finian Murtha Finian fouls Willie Shaw Willie takes the free quickly in towards the Navin goal. Well held there inside by Colum Ratty under pressure from John Lyons. Foul by John Lyons. And the Navin supporters at the town end don't like that one bit. And why should they? A heavy tackle there by John Lynch. But Colum, is he okay? He's still on the ground, still on his knees. Colum, the son of former Navin star Harry, captain of the team today. Being tended to by Joe Tallon. Almost three minutes gone in the second half. The ball has not crossed the Navin 21 yard line yet. Alan Riley with the free kick out to this side of the field. Jerry there ahead of David Beggy. Or ball breaks to Brian Riley. Finds David Beggy, who in turn finds Frankie McAvoy playing deep. Frankie lofts it in towards the goal over the heads of back and backs and forwards Willie Ryan collects very close to the end line and close attentions from Colum Kane finds Jarlath Hughes Jarlath Hughes in turn clears the ball but only to David Nelson who in turn finds Finian Murtha Finian heavily tackled David now on the 21 left footed shot across the face of the goal 
and wide. First wide for Navin O'Mahony is in the second half. And attention for a Summerhill player. Play held up once again. Hard to make out what player has been attended to from here. The numbers on the Summerhill jerseys not very legible. Ball about 70 yards out from the uh, Summerhill goal. Jerry McEntee comes back to get, try and gain possession, loses it. Ball on the 50 yard line. Finian Murtha is fouled once again. A free on the 50 yard line, a bit out of Finian's range, I would imagine. He's leaving the ball. Yes, he's leaving the ball and running in towards the goal. I think it's Brian Riley going to have a go from the 50 yard line. Just inside the 50 yard line, Brian Riley to take the free for Navan O'Mahony's. Poor kick, but Finian gains possession. Finian looks for some support, finds it in the shape of Brian Riley. Brian Riley turns, is fouled by Jerry McEntee. Much to the disappointment of Summerhill supporters. They don't like it. Now, the Manny supporters are certainly not complaining. And who's going to take this? Colum Kane, it looks like, from here. Yes, Colum Kane sporting the number 10 jersey, a left footed player like Finian Murtha. Sporting a very severe haircut today. To put down on the wind resistance, no doubt. Across the field. Oh, how strong that wind is. Out comes Summerhill. Kieran Clavin loses possession. The ball breaks towards Porig lines. Porig feels well in front of his own goal. A long relieving clearance into the O'Mahony's half of the field. Out to meet it is Brian Smith. Brian Smith loses possession, but it went off John Lyons, it would seem, or was it Robert Munley? Out over the line for a line ball. Brian himself to take it. Right footed. Towards David Beggy. Loses possession. Picks, picked up on the right hand side. Joe Castle's on the overlap. In towards Mickey Downs. Mickey Downs, what's he going to do this time? He's got support in the shape of Frankie McAvoy in front of the goal. He goes it alone. He is brought down on the edge of the square. Not a free out, says the referee. He overplayed the ball in the opinion of Vincent Lynch. Didn't get any room to look for some support. As we move into the seventh minute, towards the end of the seventh minute, Navin still leading by six points, ten points to a goal and a point. Free out for Summerhill. Relieved to stop that Navin attack. A substitute on the Summerhill team after seven minutes of the second half. It would appear to be Peter and Angle, but we'll follow the play. Andrew Young gone off. Summerhill on the attack, well held by Donald Smith, and clears it out towards Breen O'Grady. Breen O'Grady on his own 21 towards Brian Riley. Brian Riley on the 50 yard line, looks for some support, finds it, and the ball comes forward towards Frank McAvoy playing very deep David Beggy on the halfway line going forward still David Beggy going right through still manages to hold possession and sends a right footed shot where there is no Navin man at all and Willie Ryan safely gathers clears towards Porig lines Porig lines 21 yards out into the middle towards Kieran Clavin Kieran Clavin clears down to the left hand side of the field into space Will it beat backs and forwards? It does. Beats Alan Riley and Mickey MacDonald. Out over the line. Line ball for Navaramani's. Eight minutes gone in the second half. Substitute there for Summerhill after seven minutes. Andrew Young replaced by Peter Nangle, I think. We'll follow the play. Navaramani's on the attack again. A free for Summerhill on the 55 yard line. Back into the middle. Jerry McEntee comes to meet it. Loses it. 
Loses it to Derek Doonan. Derek Doonan back to Colum Ratty. Left footed clearance from Colum. But there is no naval man coming to meet it. Instead, it's Noel Young. Noel Young to Robert Munley. Robert Munley right footed. Off the upright and over the bar. First goal for Summerhill in a long time. Nine minutes into the second half and the first score since about the 20th minute in the first half. Cutting the deficit now to five points, nine minutes into the second half. First score for Robert Munley in this county final, bringing his tally to, two eight, to 14 points for the championship. Ball in the middle of the field once again. Parry lines gaining possession, looking for some support. Finds Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw, a long clearance towards Breen O'Grady. Breen O'Grady fetches safely under pressure. Still, Breen O'Grady are penalised rather harshly, in my opinion, there by referee Vincent Lynch. I thought he was about to give a free out, but then he decided to give a free in. A free into Summerhill as we come up to the end of the 10th minute. Ball put over the bar by Willie Shaw. Second point in a minute for Summerhill. The deficit now cut to four, which is nothing with a strong wind like that behind them. Two scores in a row there for Summerhill, keeping them well in touch. Ball comes toward David Beggy out ahead of Porig Lines. David on the run, bursts forward towards the 50 yard line. Still David Beggy loses possession and control and is fouled. Oh, um, and it's not the first bad decision that this umpire linesman has given against Navan O'Mahony's. An obvious push in the back there on David Beggy. Colum Ratty fielding well in the middle of the field, under pressure. Takes the free himself quickly, finds Finn and Martha. Navin O'Man is badly in need of a score. David Beggy in front of goals, gains possession, momentarily loses control and the ball. Finn and Martha on his right boot. A poor shot into the hands of Willie Ryan. Finn and Martha stronger on his left. Joe Castle's 50 yards out. Joe going forward, looking for support. Seeing none, holds onto the ball, hits it left footed across the face of the goal. The ball beats backs and forwards and eventually held by Terry Lyons. Fouled by David Nelson. Free outs as the referee. Terry Lyons takes the free himself towards the middle of the field. The ball with Mick Lyons. About 60 yards out from his own goal. Mick Lyons looking for some support. Finds it in the shape of cousin John. John forward to Jerry McEntee. Jerry McEntee in his first senior final today. Jerry claims he was fouled and the referee agrees with him some controversial decisions in the last few minutes going against Navan O'Mahony's still the lead as we enter into the 13th minute the crowd on the hill getting behind Navan O'Mahony's the crowd in the stand behind Summer Hill a long kick from Willie Shaw to the right of the goals off a Summer Hill man and wide. Big support for both teams here today. Included among that support are a section of the strong juvenile club led by Chairman PJ Lynch. Hoping to see Navan O'Mahony's record their fourth title in succession. Right now, that title is under tremendous pressure. The ball back in the middle of the field. Well held again by Mick Lyons. Mick Lyons turns to go forward. Fouls as the referee. Another free to Summerhill. Ball drops in in front of the goal. Now, what's going to happen here? Navin defence under pressure. The relieving arms of the umpire waves it wide. Much to the relief of all the def Navin defenders. Another kick out for Donald Smith. Mighty glad to see that ball go wide. That long free by Mick Lyons taken out of the hands, giving an idea of the strength of that wind, putting the defence under pressure. But the shot was too strong. 
ball back towards the middle of the field out on the far side Colum Kane gains possession bursting forward fouled without doubt he's on the ground the crowd on the far side drawing the referee's attention to something urging him to get up quickly Colum will take it himself out of the hands the ball going forward again towards Finian Murtha the ball with Finian on the 14 yard line behind, the, behind him is Kieran Clavin the ball breaking in towards the middle Mickey Downs under it as is Terry Lines. Terry Lines wins possession holds on to the ball gets the free and Summerhill live again coming up to the halfway stage in the second half just four points in it and we're just five in it at half time so Summerhill have just made inroads to the tune of one point the ball back in the middle of the field up they go and the ball comes down into the hands of Porig Lines goes forward seems to push his way forward there st loses possession to Joe Castles Derek Doonan going forward flicks the ball forward towards Finian Murtha the ball over the heads of backs and forwards and Mickey Downs ahead of his marker Noel, Noel Young Mickey Downs on the end line centres it into the middle Frankie McAvoy slips still ahead of Terry Lyons there Frankie steadies himself looks for support finds it in the shape of David Nelson David Nelson turns and shoots and over the bar what a tonic for Navin man. he's under pressure for the last couple of minutes their first score in quite a while their first score since the first minute of the second half number 12 there David Nelson putting Navin man. he's five points to the good again Navin O'Mahony's five points to the good, under 15 minutes to go. Ball in the middle of the field. Mick Lines again, bursting forward. Fouled, this is the referee. Referee calling playback. Penalising David Beggy needlessly there, I would think. Free to Summerhill to be taken by Willie Shaw win behind him halfway line a very good kick with the wind the ball breaking in the square but cleared by Alan Riley it would seem under pressure to this side of the field and back to meet it is David Nelson David Nelson looks for support finds it in the shape of Derek Doonan Derek Doonan crosses the halfway line toe taps once a long kick towards Finian Murtha Finian Murtha flicks it inside to Colum Kane now Colum Kane what's he going to do this time he's under pressure still manages to hold possession finds Finian Murtha taps it over the bar did the sensible thing Finian there well done Colum Kane under tremendous pressure from both Willie Ryan and the Summerhill defender found Finian Murtha and Finian Murtha taps it over the bar 17 minutes gone in the second half another point for Finian Murtha who certainly has found his shooting boots today We haven't had a Summerhill score in nearly nine minutes. Ball in the middle of the field again. Another free to Summerhill to be taken by Willie Shaw. Right footed in towards Brian Smith. Well held under pressure by Brian. Finds Colum Ratty. Colum the captain out towards the sideline. Beats Colum Kane out over the line. Line ball to Summerhill on the halfway line. Summerhill going forward again. Eugene Gorry or is it John Lyons it is John Lyons left footed towards the goal and now a chance for Robert Munley and a goal a goal Robert Munley I think now that puts a different complexion on the game hard to make out who scored that goal it was either Mickey McDonald or Robert Munley who's playing out around the middle of the field 18 minutes gone in the second half and the score now is 12 points for Navin O'Mahony's 2-3 for Summerhill ball back in the centre of the field again forward comes Breen O'Grady a right footed kick into space nobody there but Noel Young Noel Young collects looks up back towards the middle of the field well held again by Breen O'Grady. Breen O'Grady back in the foot of the goal. But the ball breaks into the arms of Porig Lines. Porig Lines 
ball now We're in the middle of the field again out comes Brian Smith Brian Smith gathers the ball safely finds Colum Ratty Colum steadies himself finds Derek Doonan Derek Doonan controls the ball well under pressure foul by Jerry McEntee a free to Navin Navin relieved to have the situation under control again Joe Tallon out there to tend to Derek Doonan Brian Murtagh the coach out to ex supervise the situation as well Jack Moyes the chairman out to oversee matters as well just over 10 minutes to go just 10 and a half minutes between Navarro Mahoney's and their 15th Keegan Cup win their first way back in 1953 when they were led by Tony McCormack Brian Riley there looking on as Derek Doonan receives attention Vincent Lynch looking at the stopwatch as we cross the 20th minute Brian Riley on the halfway line takes the free to take the free left footed crosses the 50 yard line towards Michael Downs David Nelson gains possession Joe Castles left footed a bit too far Willie Ryan gains possession clears left footed under pressure but out over the sideline Breen O'Grady goes to collect to take the line ball about 60 yards out a quick one to Colum Kane Colum Kane left footed steadies himself sends the ball in direction of the goal Mick Downs goes up gains possession way blocked looks for support finds it in the shape of David Nelson his shot half blocked down took the sting out of it but Willie Ryan much to the relief of the Summer Hill supporters I thought it was going to go over the line but instead Porig Lines retrieves the situation Porig going forward way blocked by Derek Doonan sends it down into the corner now Summer Hill on the attack Stephen McNally going forward and the ball is cleared by Colum Ratty once again to Derek Doonan Derek Doonan crosses the halfway line kicks the ball towards Mick Michael Downs Michael Downs under pressure loses possession of the ball Summerhill in possession a free to Summerhill a free against Finian Murtha Summerhill take it quickly Porig lines a long clearance but the ball is loose now have an under pressure and the ball back with Finian Murtha playing very deep loses it heavy challenge there by Jerry McEntee but Navin come forward again Joe Castles feeding David Nelson David Nelson coming forward deep too far ahead of Michael Downs out over the line 21 yards out Charles Hughes in a big hurry to fetch that ball the linesman points to the spot just 21 yards out a bit beyond it Summerhill there gaining a few extra yards just three points in it and eight minutes left and Jerry McEntee taking his leave 52 minutes into the game Jerry McEntee off the off the field being replaced by Kieran McNeilis 8 minutes to go 8 minutes for Summerhill to pull this game out of the fire 8 minutes for Navin to hold out and the linesman telling Charlotte Hughes where to place the ball ball back in the middle of the field David Nelson wins under pressure there from Noel Young back to Joe Castles Joe Castles goes forward with the ball challenged by Mick Lines left footed kick by Joe Castles beyond the forward will Colin Kane keep it in play he does he's fouled is he yes a free to Navin says referee Vincent Lynch a chance here for Michael Downs to stretch from Mahoney's lead to score Navin's 13th point their fourth of the second half his second in the second half across the face of the goal and wide and wide it is a missed opportunity there for Navin but a difficult free for Michael Downs in that wind still very strong as we come up to the 54th minute of the game six minutes left in this game 
and Summerhill on the attack again Mick Lyons foul takes the free himself ball dropping in front of the goal out comes Summerhill with the ball but losing it to Brian Riley is it Brian Riley yes Brian Riley it is out over the line a relieving clearance under pressure possession with Summerhill Summerhill Mick Lyons to take the line ball himself across the face of the goal Breen O'Grady under pressure finds David Nelson who's been playing very deep today Colm Ratty cool as a cucumber forward but straight into the hands of Jarlath Hughes Jarlath coming forward towards the halfway line time running out for Jarlath the ball back in the hands of Joe Castles Joe slows things down finds Colm Kane back with Joe the experienced Joe Castles in his 11th final today the ball with Noel Young escaping the attention of Michael Downs Michael Downs concedes the free ball back in the middle of the field Derek Doonan fails to possess Mick Lyons Mick Lyons going forward Frankie McAvoy back and oh now the ball been put over the bar but the referee is having none of it referee unconvinced by Mick Lyons' theatrics it would seem as if Mick Lyons headbutted Frankie McAvoy, referee unconvinced feeling that Frankie McAvoy was making a meal of the situation now what's the referee giving surely he's going to hop the ball for retaliation at the very least no referee decides to give Summerhill the free Porig to take it under five minutes left Navin defence under siege yet again ball breaks in front of the square and Barney Riley gains possession feeds Derek Doonan in turn tries to get David Nelson but Willie Shaw nips in 21 yards out Willie Shaw going forward toe taps once finds his way blocked turns did he turn too many times no he didn't but Joe Castles nips in and saves the day Joe Castles coming forward way blocked but it takes a lot to knock Joe Charlotte Hughes in possession 70 yards out finds Porig lines Four minutes to go. Porig Lines going forward on a solo run. One last ditch attempt to bring the Summerhill back in the game. Still Porig Lines. A grubber kick along the ground. The ball in front of the goal. B- ball blocked down. Shabazzle in front of the goal. The ball's in the net. The ball is in the net. The sides are level with four minutes to go. Stephen McNally, the scorer. Now, what a game we have in our hands. Navinaman, he's in the lead for so long seem to be weathering the storm now find themselves in big trouble just over three minutes left could we have the first draw since 1981 or will some team take the initiative David Beggy on the attack David Beggy in possession looking for some support finds it in the shape of David Nelson back into David Beggy going forward no support is grounded by Mick Lyons rather unceremoniously not even a ticking off from referee Vincent Lynch. Paul Mallon in the game. Who's he replacing? Frankie McAvoy. Three minutes to go. Paul Mallon in the game for Frankie McAvoy. Now, a pressure kick here for Michael Downs. With the wind against him, it's hard to expect him to put it over the bar. Someone sporting booing there from Summerhill supporters in front of me. Mick sends it low. Ball held by Charlotte Hughes, finds his way blocked, wins a free. Just two and a half minutes to go. Another Summerhill supporter warming up in front of me. Edward Daly warming up. Summerhill preparing to make another substitution. Summerhill seemed to be out of this game for such a long time, but the game is never over till the final whistle. The ball in the middle of the field. In possession is Mick Lyons. Going forward. Finds his way blocked by Joe Castles. Feeds and Noel Young. Noel Young crosses the 50-yard line. A right for the kick from Noel. Police down over the end line by Donald Smith and wide. Just over 90 seconds left. 90 seconds for one team or other to snatch this game. Or will we have the, a draw? This is the third meeting of the... Navin O'Mahony's in Summerhill one win apiece to date the ball with Porig Lines. Porig Lines 70 yards out finds Willie Shaw across the field 
the ball is with Robert Munnelly going forward right for it shot blocked down but the ball back with Breen O'Grady Breen O'Grady chasing the ball gets possession on his own end line finds some support now Navin coming forward one last attempt a free for Navin surely Barney Riley fouled by Robert Munley. now Bar Barney there a bit anxious to get on with the game referee bringing the ball forward no he isn't the ball in in the possession of Summerhill once again Summerhill in the middle of the field ball coming forward and the ball a chance hit short Dolan Smith in possession now we enter the last half minute a free out I think yes a free out for Dolan Smith the tension the excitement is unbearable as we enter the last half minute still a chance for either team to take victory a third substitution for Summerhill can't make out who's coming off but we'll follow the play we're just on the 30th minute now the ball breaks forward Finian Murtha in possession One Finian Murtha dragged, pulled unceremoniously held Finian takes his time surely a last chance now for Navin O'Mahony finds Michael Downs on the 21 yard line Michael going forward bursting past his, his man still Michael Downs looking for some support finds it left foot a shot from Finian but the ball goes to the left and wide Summerhill supporters cheering in the background cheering with relief just 40 seconds of injury time played injury time at the discretion of referee Vincent Lynch so we look set for a replay here in a fortnight's time presumably referee looking at his watch and blows and there we have it the 1990 Mead Senior Football Final a draw the final score Omahuna 12 points Drumsaru 3 goals and 3 points the replay date not as yet fixed but with Mead meeting Cork here next Sunday in their opening National Football League tie I would imagine it would be this day fortnight Hooler Hello and welcome to Park Talton on Oeuvre for the 1990 Mead Senior Football Final replay between Navan O'Mahony's the holders and Summerhill the challengers who last won the title in 1986. St Mary's band entertaining the crowd in the background a much smaller crowd than was here a fortnight ago for the drawn match. Both teams anxiously awaiting the start of this game which is under 10 minutes away. Firstly let us run through the teams. Navan O'Mahony's no changes in personnel or positional from the team which started the last day. In goals, Donald Smith. Right fullback, Brian Smith. Fullback, Alan Riley. Left fullback and captain, Colm Ratty. The halfback line. Former Cavan player, Breno Grady, wearing number five. Centre back, Alan's brother, Brian, wearing number six. And on the left, former Fermanagh star, Brendan O'Reilly, wearing number seven. Midfield, number eight, the evergreen Joe Castles. Bidding today, to win his 8th Keegan Cup medal and partnering him Derek Doonan the half forward line number 10 Colm Kane number 11 David Jinxie Beggy and number 12 David Nelson and finally the full forward line wearing number 13 Finian Murtha full forward Frankie McAvoy and on the left Michael Downs on the Summerhill team there are several positional and per one personnel change let's go through the Summerhill team in goals Willie Ryan Number two, Noel Young. Number three, Terry Young. Wearing number seven is Jarlath Hughes in the left full back position. The half back line are on the right, Kieran Clavin in the centre Porig lines. And on the left, wearing number 12 is Eugene Gorry. The midfield is the same as that which started the last day Mick Lyons and Billy Shaw. In the half forward line, on the right, Stephen McNally, whose late goal forced this replay. In the centre, wearing number 13 is John Lyons, the captain. And on the left, wearing number 17, Peter Nangle, who made a late appearance the last day as a substitute. Replacing Jerry McEntee, but playing in the right corner position, is Kieran McNeilis. Full forward, Michael McDonnell. And on the left, on the left, Robert Brunley. So the team's getting together for the parade before the start of the senior final. 
The wind not as strong, I would imagine, as the last day, but blowing diagonally from the hospital towards the scoreboard and will be favouring the team that's playing towards the town end. Additionally, this low sun will also give an advantage to the team playing towards the town end. And that Stephen McNally has gone over to the other wing. The game is on. First to break, Navin O'Mahony's. Derek Doonan on the ball. A long ball in towards the hospital end. Frankie McAvoy has possession in front of the goal. A shot well stopped on the line. An early let off there for Summerhill. The ball back with Joe Castles. 40 yards out. Joe looks up, kicks, right footed. The ball dips to the left and wide. First wide of the game there for Navin O'Mahony's inside 26 seconds. In this first half it will be important for O'Mahony's to contain Summerhill. Summerhill will be anxious in this half to run up a few scores. Ball drops about 60 yards out from the O'Mahony's goal, breaking towards the 50 yard line. Foul by David Beggy. Free to Summerhill to be taken by Kieran Clavin. Ball in the middle of the field once again. Peter Nangle flicks it forward towards Mick Lines. Mick Lines finds his full forward. Ball breaks. Robert Munley on the left. It's with his left and the ball goes wide. Early wides for both sides. And there's a player down injured. Brian Murtha and Joe Tallon out attending to him. I can't make out who it is. It is like Joe Castles. Joe be, uh, being tended there by Dr. Jack Finn. He seems to be okay. Joe, who played in the drawing game despite an unfortunate eye injury, is fit again. Straight into the hands of the Summerhill man. Summerhill going forward. A foul there by Stephen McNally. Free to Navin O'Mahony's. Brino Grady to take it out of the hands, of course, which he is permitted to do. Ball with Davy Nelson. High tackle there by Kieran Clavin. Still David Nelson going forward. Fails to find Finian Murtha. And now Summerhill break again. But Mick Lyons in the middle of the field. Hits it out to the left towards Stephen McNally. Leaves it to Robert Munley. Neat pick up. Robert Munley going forward. Looking up, finding no support. Has a go himself. A fine kick from out the field, but once again wide. Second wide for Robert Munley. Second wide for Summerhill. Two and a half minutes gone, first half. Goes Willie Shaw, breaks it down towards Peter Nangle. Colin Ratty comes out to meet it, fails to gain possession. A free into Summerhill there, a foul by Alan Riley on Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald leaving the ball for Robert Munley, I think, coming over to take it. No, it's John Lyons. John Lyons from the right hand side of the field, about 35 to 40 yards from the Amahani's goal. Good kick with the wind, but the ball goes to the right and wide. John Lyons not allowing fully for that strong wind, which was blowing across the face of the goal. Ball out this side of the field towards Brendan Riley, who anticipated that kick out. Very well, Br Brennan charged with the ball, still holds possession. Kicks it right footed down towards David Nelson. Ball breaks, David Nelson fouls as referee Vincent Lynch. Vincent, a late replacement for Kevin Campbell before the drawing game. Free to be taken by Brian Riley. Left footed. 
And foul on the ground by Noel Young, free into Navarro Mahoney's. Free to be taken by McDowns, kicking into the wind. Across the face of the goal, out to meet it, is Eugene Gorry, playing at left half back today. Kicks it into the middle, over the heads of backs and forwards, coming to meet it is Willie Shaw. Willie Shaw right footed towards the middle of the middle of the field. Ball breaks to Peter Nangle, going forward, passes inside, intercepted by Colum Ratty. Well intercepted by Colum Ratty, out to Joe in the middle of the field. Joe kicks it right footed towards David Beggy. David Beggy comes out to meet the ball, loses, fails to gain possession. A late tackle there by Mick Lyons. Ball in the middle of the field once again. Referee penalises Derek Doonan for a sliding tackle. Free to Summerhill. Free to be taken by Billy Shaw on the halfway line. A good kick with the help of the wind straight over the bar. First score of the game. Six minutes gone. A fine kick with the help of the wind, putting Summerhill into the lead after six minutes of the first half. Breaks in the middle of the field. Derek Dunning gets it a second time. Goes forward. Kicks it right footed into the corner where Frankie McAvoy comes to meet it. Frankie first to the ball. Keeps the ball from going over the line. Held back there by Terry Lines. No freeze as the referee. Ball goes out. And the linesman decides it's a Summerhill ball. It looked as if Frankie was held that time by Terry Lines. Referee having none of it. Well blocked by Derek Dunning. But at the expense of a line ball to be taken by Peter Nangle. Peter leaves the ball to Noel Young, Noel Young about 45 yards out from his own goal, left footed, ball breaks, cleared forward by Brian Riley, out over the sideline, another line ball to Summerhill, on the halfway line, Parag Lines coming over to take it. Kicks it right footed, in towards the Omani's goal. Ball breaks to Colum Ratty, a fine clearance from Colum Ratty, out to this side of the field. Going to meet it is David Beggy, but the ball is going to beat him out over the sideline. John Lyons collects to take the line ball. Out to meet it, but the ball breaks in front of the goal. Dole Smith, cool under pressure, clears the ball towards the middle of the field. Referee blows the whistle for a free, a foul on David Beggy. A lot of Navarro Manny supporters very unhappy with Vincent Lynch's performances in his last two matches, in which Navarro were involved. Can have no cause for complaint so far today. Free to be taken by Brian Riley. With his trusty left boot, across the 50 yard line, coming to meet it, but failing to gain possession, Finian Murtha. Ball with Colin Kane, I think. Yes, it is Colin, left for it. Tackled as he kicked it, but it doesn't do him any harm at all. Gets the equaliser after eight and a half minutes. A fine point from play there from 30 yards out on the left from Colin Kane. Willie Ryan rushing to collect. Summerhill will be anxious to put up a few scores in this first half. Because both the wind and the sun favouring them as they play into the town goal. Ball in the middle of the field. Nobody gains possession cleanly. Ball with Summerhill. Free for Summerhill. Quickly taken by John Lyons. Ball in front of the goal. Hops. Donald Smith gathers safely. Clears to Alan Riley. Alan Riley right footed towards the far side of the field. A late tackle on Donald Smith as he lies on the ground. Umpires very unvigilant, if I can use the phrase. 
Very referee is coming in. Has anybody seen anything? Obviously a late tackle on Donald Smith. Who hit him? I'm not sure. Maybe Vincent Lynch will be able to sort this out. Donald Smith feeling well under pressure, finding Alan Riley, whose clearance went out over the line, but Donald was tackled as he cleared. Brian Murtha looking on anxiously as Joe Tallon tends to Donald Smith. Referee speaking to his umpires. Checking to see that Donald Smith is okay. He's a big lad, our Donald. Hopefully he'll be okay. Referee doesn't appear to be taking any action. Now, is he awarding a free or a line ball? He's giving the line ball to Summerhill. The ball in in front of the goal again. Up goes Alan Riley. Ball breaks with Donald Smith again. Kicks it out to the far side of the field. Where waiting for it is the Summerhill player. Can't make out who it is from here. Very, very poor numbering on the Summerhill backs. A kick from out the field and the ball has gone wide. Another wide for Summerhill. Their fourth wide of the game. Just two for Navin O'Mahony's. Ball in the middle of the field once again. Up goes Derek Doonan. Ball breaks to Summerhill. A free, a free for a foul on Kieran Clavins as referee Vincent Lynch. Free to be taken by McLean's. In front of the goal again. Ball breaks. In behind. Vicky McDonald, I think, has it. Looks for some support. Gets it, but the ball has gone wide again. Another wide for Summerhill. I, they're fifth and all in this first half. Wides which may prove costly. Summerhill with a lot of the play at this stage of the first half but not making the most of the chances and that was a good chance <laughs> Dolan Smith kicks it this side of the field again but the ball again breaks towards Derek Doonan Derek across the halfway line looks up looks for somebody to kick it to still Derek going forward it crosses the 50 yard line no support finds Frankie Nelson now, but he fails to gain possession. So the ball back in the middle of the field again. Colum Raddy coming to meet it. Finds Brendan Barney Riley. Barney right footed across the 50 yard line, but no one there to meet it for Navin O'Mahony's. Frankie tackles Terry Lyons, but the ball breaks to Peter Angle. Peter Angle looking for support. Gets it in the shape of John Lyons, who finds cousin Mick. Mick left footed in towards the full forward line. But the ball breaks out again. And it, this time it's with Colum Kane. Colum Kane chasing the ball out towards the sideline. Fails to keep it from going out. A line ball to Summerhill. One point each. 13 and a half minutes gone, first half. Another line ball for Summerhill. In towards the O'Mahony's goal. The ball breaks into the hands of Barney Riley. Barney holds onto the ball. Fouled by Willie Shaw, a free to Barney. Leaving the ball to Alan Riley. Alan takes the kick from the ground, about 21 yards out from his own goal. Ball breaks again. Derek Doonan gets more possession, crosses the 70, kicks it right footed. Tries to find Jinxie. Jinxie can't get possession, but Jinxie is held, says Vincent Lynch. Free to Amahani's, 30 yards out. Mickey Downs placing the ball. A difficult kick this against the wind, so he likes to take a short kick. An expensive mistake as the ball goes straight to Porig lines. Porig is fouled by Finian Murta, and Porig takes the free himself. A free out 
A blatant piece of holding there on Breen O'Grady. Breen takes it quickly, finds Joe. Joe in the middle of the field, right for it, looking for Jinxie and finds Jinxie. Jinxie on the 50 yard line, right for it. A kick towards David Nelson, I think. A high tackle there on David Nelson. A rugby style tackle on David Nelson. A free for Navin O'Mahony. A free to be taken by Finno. Finian Murta, who scored six points in the drawn game, elect attempting to open his account in this replay. Kicking into the sun into the wind. Well held on the line. Difficult kick against the wind. Ball breaks to David Nelson. David Nelson finds Jinxie. Jinxie right for it. Right for it from way out the field. Over the bar. A fine point there from 40 yards against the wind by David Beggy after 15 and a half minutes. 15 and a half minutes gone first half a fine point from David Beggy from 40 yards to give Navin O'Mahony's a one point lead against the wind good pass from David Nelson finding Jinxie Beggy and he kicked over the bar Jinxie got Nav O'Mahony's first score of the last day getting their second score their first score from play today Ball in the middle of the field, well held by McLean's rugby style tackle, a punch I think, was it a punch thrown there, referee remonstrating with McLean's, he's calling together, is it Joe, he's calling together Mick and he's calling Joe, having a word with both players. I didn't think it was Joe who struck McLean's. <laughs> so referees booking Joe Castles and McLean's after 17 minutes of this first half. Free to Summerhill. Ball in front of the goal again, and it's cleared out towards Barney Riley. Fails to gain possession the first time, fouled the second time, a free out. Barney holds possession, finds Alan Riley. Alan will take the free. <laughs> Fairly low key first half, but there's still f over 40 minutes to go in this game. <laughs> Up they go, and the ball breaks. Peter Nangle, a short chip forward towards Michael McDonald. Fails to hold on to possession. Still Summerhill going forward with John Lyons. John is fouled. Another free to Summerhill. <laughs> Very little fluid football in this game. A free for Summerhill. I think Willie Shaw is going to take it. And it is a point. points each, 18 and a half minutes gone. Ball in the middle of the field again, Stephen McNally with possession, looking for support, kicks it right foot across the field, Barney Riley waits to meet it, calls but fumbles, gets it a second time, kicks it right foot towards the middle of the field, up goes Mickey Downs, breaks the ball to Derek Doonan, still Derek Doonan, going forward, tackled, still Derek Doonan, across the 70 yard line, looking for support, kicks it right footed, but first to meet it is Porig Lines. Porig Lines gains possession ahead of Jinxie Beggy kicks it right footed towards the middle of the field Brian Riley comes to meet it, but Peter Nangle fixes it, but only towards Brian Smith, Brian Smith to Barney Riley Barney loses possession again but finds Derek Doonan, Derek Doonan on the 70 yard line, right footed Finian Murtha goes to meet it, seemed to be pushed, was pushed, kicks, takes the free quickly towards Colum Kane, Colum Kane left footed, over the bar, but Colum Kane was fouled heavily as he kicked, 
and the referee doesn't seem to be calling anyone. Yes, he is. He's booking a Summerhill player for that late, blatant and needless charge on Colum Kane. Second point for Colum Kane. He's booking, I th think, he's booking Terry Lyons. Summerhill numbering very, very illegible. Well, what matters is that after 20 minutes, Navajo Man is lead by one point, three points to two. <laughs> Joe Castle goes up, breaks the ball down towards Jinxie Beggy. Jinxie flicks it forward, finds David Nelson on the far side of the field. Frankie playing out th the field. Thought it was David Nelson for a second, but Jinxie on the ball. Jinxie going forward, heavily tackled, a free on the 21 yard line. Now, Finian Murtha places the ball on the 21. A difficult kick this for Finian. Will he have a go for a point or will he attempt to place it? A fine kick from Finian after 21 minutes. A difficult kick from out on the right-hand side of the field. Finian's first score in this county final to go with the six he got in the drawn game. And the ball in the middle of the field again. Up they go, but a high tackle, a dangerous tackle there by Mick Lyons and Joe Castles. Well, is Vincent Lynch prepared to take any action? And Joe remonstrating with the referee. And now what's the referee going to do? Well, the referee, I think, should have taken stronger action than Mick Lyons. Referee should have been mindful of the fact that Joe had a serious eye injury a fortnight ago. And once again, referee Vincent Lynch afraid to take action on named county players. A rather dismal performance from Vincent Lynch a fortnight ago and an equally dismal one a month ago in Kells. And now once again, Vincent Lynch shows that he hasn't got the bottle for this sort of occasion. Navano Matney's players telling Vincent Lynch who the real culprit was. But Vincent Lynch doesn't want to know. <laughs> yes, indeed, it was one of the lines. It was Mick Lyons. Joe, who picked up a serious injury at work only a fortnight ago. And will Joe be able to continue? The crowd get angry. Jack Miles comes on to examine the extent of the injury. Joe Tallon going for attention. I think it is very serious. He's sending Joe off. Well, this is a shame. That is a shame. Vincent Lynch hasn't got a clue, has he? He should have realised that, that Mick Lyons had been booked already, that Joe was carrying a, a very serious injury into this game and had the bravery to play. So Navan O'Mahony is trying to reorganise themselves. Well, there's no shame on Joe for being sent off. Only shame on Vincent Lynch. And on Mick Lyons too. Still no man is coming back on the attack. David Nelson flying forward is fouled, surely. What will the referee give? Yes, he's decided to give a free. A chance for Navarro Martinez to stretch their lead. It's like, it's like the harassment we are putting up with there. And Mick Downs opens his account with a point after 24 minutes. So Navarro Mahan is down to 14 men. Jack is on to you, he's the 
Jack Farley agitated, Jack Moyles agitated, and rightly so. A ball in the middle of the field again. Mick Down seems to be gone to the middle of the field. With the ball with Summerhill as they go forward. And now, a very, very strange decision there by referee Vincent Lynch. Now, Breno Grady comes forward, heavily tackled, but lets the no free for O'Mahony's. Charlotte Hughes in possession, 50 yards out. On the ball, breaks forward. John Lyons on the attack, fails to pick up, tries to control it with the feet. His way is blocked. A referee deems that there was a pick up. I presume that that will mean a free out to Navin O'Mahony's. Now the pressure is relieved. 25 minutes gone, Navin O'Mahony's lead against the win by five points to do but down to 14 men after 22 minutes. Joe Castle's controversially sent off by referee Vincent Lynch. <laughs> David Beggy appears to be playing in the middle of the field and it would appear that Noel Young is the Summerhill free man. I thought for a second it was Porrig Lines, but no, it's Noel Young is the free man. Well held by Brian Riley, a heavy tackle on Brian Riley, but still he gets the ball to Colum Ratty. Colum Kane coming deep, gets possession. Colum finds Finian Murtha on the halfway line. Finian heavily tackled Finian. Fouled by Robert Munley. Free to O'Mahony's. Yeah, yeah, he can't take him. Now, what's happening here? Oh, the game is getting out of control. A foul on Robert Munley. I didn't see what happened. That was Frankie McAvoy. That did it. Now, what's going to happen now? Referee calling for the ball. He had blown it for a free for O'Mahony's. But players hadn't responded to the whistle. No, 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 no. Lines is here. Lines is here. 26 minutes gone. I would imagine there would be some injury time played because we've had a few stoppages in this first half. The injury to Joe Castles and the injury to Donald Smith. And now Robert Munley gains attention. As the rain gathers over the hospital end, we look to be heading for a downpour. Now, Vincent Lynch attempts to restart the game. With what? A throw in, a free. Yes, this is free, which will be taken by former Cavan player Breno Grady. Breno played for Cavan in their last Ulster final appearance in 1983. Kicks it right footed. Trying to find. I don't know who he was trying to find. He hit the ball out over the sideline. Line ball to Summerhill. 55 yards out from their own goal. Ball towards the middle of the field, on beyond the middle of the field. The ball breaks. O'Mahony's player goes down to get it. I can't make out who it is. Ball with Derek Doonan. Picking up a lot of loose possession, Derek. is fouled once again. And the crowd braced themselves for the rain. Umbrellas go up on the far side of the field. And ball 50 yards out from the O'Mahony's goal. Ball in possession of... Terry Lyons, I think. Noel Young kicks it left footed. Down towards O'Mah the O'Mahony's goal line. Ball with John Lyons. Flicks it into the middle towards Michael McDonald. Fails to gain possession. Is tackled. Is surrounded by Navin players. Kicks it left footed. Shot blocked. And the aver danger averted again. The ball towards Derek Doonan, who's working very hard today. Derek in possession. Hops it twice, I think, but still manages to hold on to it. Kicks it towards Derek Nelson or David Nelson. David Nelson holds on to the ball, looks for some support, finds it in the shape of Finian Murtha. Finian Murtha going forward, tries to get into a better scoring position, hits it left footed, but hits it just to the right and wide. Only the third wide in this first half for Navan O'Mahony's, and the rain and the wind comes pouring down. Crowd running for cover. There he is. Coming forward, being tackled by all and sundry, but still finds support. 
Brian Riley is fouled by Michael Downs. Referee speaks to Michael Downs. I think he's booking Michael Downs. And the referee has decided to call a halt. Half time here at Park Talton at this Meads senior football final replay. Navin O'Mahony's five points, Summerhill two points. <laughs> and Summerhill first on the attack. Is that Mickey McDonald I see in the middle of the field at the start of the second half? Porrig Lines taking the short free. Quick Lines going forward. Mick is tackled in a scramble off the ball. Referee lets play go on. Play. No punches thrown there between Mick Lines and Brian Riley, but Summerhill on the attack. Brian loses possession on the slippery surface. The ball with Willie Shaw. He, he fouls the ball. Referee uh, up at the play. A free to Navin O'Mahony's, which Brian Riley will take from the ground although he's entitled to take it from the hand which he is elected to do with his left boot but f the ball finds Porig Lines Porig Lines kicks forward but again Brian Riley clears it left footed this time looking for David Nelson but the ball with Noel Young Noel Young the extra man playing out around the middle of the field dispossessed there by Brian Barney Riley the ball breaking forward David Nelson or David Beggy First to the ball, fouled a free to Navin O'Mahony's. Jinxie takes the free quickly, finds Colum Kane. Colum Kane on the left, on his trusty left foot, going forward, steadies himself. It's fouled, head high tackle, no free, says the referee. Very, very dangerous tackle, and the referee decides to give a free out. A strange decision, that. A bad decision, that, by the referee, I would have think. Free out, Summerhill. Willie Ryan the red cap to take Seven years since Navin O'Mahony scored a goal in a county. <laughs> and Summerhill on the attack. Peter Nangle in possession. Or is it Eugene Gorry? It is Eugene Gorry. Fouled a free to Navin O'Mahony's. The Navin lads wouldn't want to let Summer Hill get back into this game at this juncture. On the ball in the possession of Brian Smith. Quite game so far, Brian. But and his kick is blocked down, the ball with John Lyons going forward, still has the ball, kicks it left footed, over the bar, and the second point in a minute for Summerhill, just when the game seemed to be slipping away from them, and they're right back in it. Yes. Six points to four then. Six and a half minutes gone in the second half. On the ball, breaks past the middle of the field. David Nelson picks up, looks for Jinxie Beggy. Jinxie going forward. Has he got support? He has inside in the shape of Colin Kane. It goes it alone. 
and the cheer, the awes of the crowd tells it all. Another wide for Navin Amani's. We're first of the second half. Colm Kane there, well positioned in, in front of goal, but David elected to go it alone, and sadly for him, the wrong option. the ball breaks but breaks to a summer hill player a free to is it a free no so the referee but Parry Glynes coming forward on a solo run reminiscent of the run he made late in the drawn game but he's blocked by David Beggy some support for Omani's yes Omani's back in possession in the shape of Finian Murtha Finian is fouled takes the free quickly finds Colum Kane Colum Kane the furthest player forward left footed but to the right and wide Callum Kane on the left, but headed to the right and wide. Two good chances going to begging there from Mahanis as the ball breaks forward. Barney Riley comes to meet it, but the ball is blocked by Alan Riley. The ball with Sir Hill again coming forward. The ball with John Lyons. John Lyons fights it out to Stephen McNally. Stephen McNally on the left and a point. Eight and a half minutes gone, second half, and now there's just one point between them. I think David Beggy is coming off. No, gloves. No, David Beggy looking for some gloves. <laughs> Brian Murtha having a word with Jinxie, having previously spoken to Colin Kane. Now, Summerhill are putting it up to Navin O'Mahony's. Alan Riley seems to be in a bit of trouble. But he's taking his position. Yes, he took the ball full in the face, I think, when he went to block it down. Well held again in the middle of the field by Mick Lyons. Tackled by Mickey Lyons, or by Mickey Downs. The ball breaks to Bruno Grady, fails to pick it up. Summerhill on the break again. Well intercepted by Colum Ruddy. Finds Derek Doonan. Derek Doonan steadies himself, looking for support. Hits it right footed down towards Colum Kane. The ball beats Colum Kane. Well held by Eugene Gorry. Clears his lines, but only as far as Jinxie Beggy, who's tackled heavily. Referee decided not to give a free. Finian Murtha looking for support finds Frankie McAvoy but he loses possession uh, on Summerhill on the attack again ball with the extra man Noel Young Noel Young is tackled high now what's that going to be right in front of the referee Just a severe ticking off there for Frankie McAvoy. Nothing more than that. <laughs> the referee seems to be allowing the tackler some leeway in these slippery conditions. Free taken by Porig Lines. The ball well held by Michael Downs. Michael Downs looking for now for some support. Hits it right footed out towards this side of the field. Out under it is Callum Kane. The ball breaks. But Colm Kane gets it a second time. Colm looks for some support. Breno Grady kicks it forward towards David Nelson. David Nelson fails to get possession. Jinxie on the break. Still Jinxie on the right. Going forward. Crosses the 21. Is fouled. Oh, a very high tackle. And the referee. Is he going to give a free against Pori Glines? I think he could have spoken to Pori Glines at least for that tackle. But as I say, he seems to be giving the tackler the benefit of the doubt. Very, very slippy out there after that heavy rain before half time. The ball with Finian across the face of the goal. Well held inside. And the Summerhill come forward again.
well on the crest of a wave for the moment. Going forward with Mickey Lyons, tackled by David Beggy. Not fouled to the referee. Summerhill again with the, on, on the attack. Peter Angle hits it right footed in towards the goal. Well held inside, fouled. Must surely inside. Alan Riley surely fouled there. And the ball with Colum Kane. Colum Kane hits it into space for David Nelson to chase. David Nelson ahead of his man. Kieran Clavin seems to be labouring there as David Nelson collects on the end line. David hits it across the face of the goal. Who's inside? Frankie under it. But the ball breaks unkindly for him. A heavy tackle and Frank. Frank shoots. Oh, it arrives to the height of the bar. And oh, what a great chance when they're begging. The ball hit the underside of the bar. Summerhill had two lucky escapes the last day when Willie Ryan saved them. But that on that occasion, it was the underside of the bar saved Summerhill. A goal that surely would have put O'Mahony's on the high road. <laughs> Porig lines on the attack. David goes to meet him. David blocks him once again. But Porig lines gains possession. Paul Mallon, I see, warming up. And once again, it's Brian, yes, Brian Smith there with his left knee heavily strapped, fouled, coming out to meet the ball. The ball in the middle of the field. The extra man telling around the middle of the field for Summerhill. A kick out to this side of the field. Brian O'Grady tries to get there first. The ball is over the lines as the ump says the linesman, Breen O'Grady to take it. Breen finds Finno, coming very deep in the second half. Finno slips, left footed, into this corner towards Colum Kane. Will the ball beat Colum Kane? Yes, it does beat Colum Kane. The intention was good. But the effort not correctly executed. Fine ball to Summerhill. 15 minutes, 14 minutes gone in the second half. Paul Mallon in for David Nelson. Paul Mallon gains possession. Colum Kane controls the ball on the left, looking for some support. Finds Paul Mallon. First touch of the ball for Paul. Ball going forward, looks for some support. Finds it in the shape. Oh, it's a goal. Yes, Mickey Downs, the scorer. The Clareborn teacher gets the first goal for Davin O'Mahony's in a county final since 1983. What a telling substitute. Paul Mallon taking the pass from Colum Kane, centering, and Mickey Downs flicking to the net. 15 minutes to go. But Summerhill are not giving up yet. A high tackle and a high tackle, tackle on Mickey McDonald by Brendan Riley or, or Brian Riley and free to Summerhill Summerhill substitute warm up but we'll follow the play and Brian Riley gains possession slippery conditions make it very difficult for all and sundry outside as Summerhill come forward the ball with Willie Shaw Willie Shaw transfers it quickly and the ball ends up with Derek Doonan. Derek Doonan on his own 30 yard line. Kicks it out towards the middle of the field. A foul on an Avon O'Matney's player, surely. Yes, a foul on David Nelson by Kieran Clavin. A free 70 yards out from the Summerhill goal to Avon O'Matney's. A lot of frees in this game. Not a game, day for the purest. But who cares when your side is winning? A free quickly taken. Coming to meet it is Colum Kane. Colum Kane heavily tackled, fouled, surely. Yes. Being held there by the jersey, a free to Finno. Finno with all the time in the world to take this free now. Surely well within his range, with the wind still behind him. Omahani's bidding for their 15th Keegan Cup win, Summerhill for their 6th. 
Finno, the ball drops short, but drops over the bar. I thought for a second the ball was going to drop safely into the hands of Willie Ryan. But Finno had the range. Finno's third point of this game, second of the second half. O'Mahony's one goal in seven, Summerhill five points, and we've 17 minutes gone in the second half. Up goes Jinxie, breaks the ball down, but only breaks it to a Summerhill man. And the ball in the centre of the field again. Summerhill coming forward. Porig lines overplays the ball. It wasn't Porig, sorry, there it was Charlotte Hughes overplaying the ball, I think. This Summerhill numbering very, very hard to make out. Finno on the left hand side looking for support hits it with his right and hits it over the bar <laughs> almost 80 minutes gone in this half and another fine point there for Navin O'Mahony stretching the lead now to 6 points but let us not count our chickens at this stage a fortnight ago, Navin O'Mahony's led by six points. And what happened next is history. <laughs> Jerry McEntee with his left wrist heavily trapped, looks on anxiously. And Colm Raddy plays the ball out to this side of the field, goes to get it a second time. And Colm Kane gains possession. Shot blocked down. But Colin Raddy has it again, transfers the ball to Brian Riley. Brian Riley steadies himself, looks for someone to aim it to. And he finds Finno. Finian Martha playing very deep in the second half. Finno loses possession. Referee Vincent Lynch decides to give a free. Or maybe he was just looking for an excuse to tie his shoelaces. Either way, it's a free to Navin O'Mahony's. And Brian O'Reilly, Brian Riley will take it again. And Finian Murtha having a friendly chat with a Summerhill defender. And Finno wins, wins possession, hits it on his left. A ball going very close to, to the upright, but going to the wrong side of the upright and wide. And the rain clowns gather over the hospital again. The umbrellas are raised at the Navin O'Mahony's end. But the supporters won't mind if it rains. Their side are leading by six points. And there's six minutes left. Nine minutes left, brother. Mickey Downs in possession. Finds support in the shape of Damien doing it. Hits it right footed. Damien is fouled as he kicked. Referee blows the whistle for what surely will be a 14 yards free to Navin O'Mahony's. Yes, it is. Another chance for Finian Murta. A chance to score his fourth point in the second half, his fifth and all. Incidentally, the PJ Plusker Award, the award for the man of the match in this county final, will be presented on the basis of performances in the drawing game. Strange decision, that. Twenty-two minutes gone in the second half. Eight minutes to go. Willie Ryan again, kicking into the sun. Kicks towards Eugene Gorry. Eugene Gorry fails to gain possession the first time. Gets it the second time. Kicks it towards Peter Nangle. Peter transfers the ball to Mickey McDonald. Tackled by Paul Mallon. Mickey hits it left footed. Colm Raddy squares up to it. It's fouled. And it's a free out to Navin O'Mahony's. And the rain comes down again. But we don't mind. Just over seven minutes to go. Donald Smith with the free. Oh, Derek swings at the ball, but swing catches fresh air. Catches a crab, to borrow a, a phrase from rowing. 
and Omani is in the shape of Finian worth a go forward Finian is fouled, takes the free quickly David Nelson on a solo run David Nelson going forward still David Nelson has a shot, chips over the bar and is attempting to fake it's the insurance point 23 and a half minutes gone nearly 24 minutes gone in the second half Omani stretched the lead to 7 to 8 points rather 110 to 5 points and the first point of this game for David Nelson. Five players by my reckoning have scored for Navan O'Mahony's. The only forward not to score by my reckoning is Frankie, Frank, was Frankie McAvoy. Frankie, who was substituted in the 45th minute by Paul Mallon. Paul Mallon, who laid on the vital goal for Mickey Downs. Oh man, he's on the attack again. But the ball with Summerhill. A free out to Summerhill. And something happened off the ball there. The crowd reacting, referee. looking around him <laughs> is he what's he doing he's asking for the free to be taken again just over five minutes to go five minutes between Navan O'Mahony's and their fourth title in a row and the ball breaks in the middle of the field with Parry Glines very little clean catching around the middle of the field today but conditions didn't lend itself to clean catching Summerhill on the attack, a last gasp effort but uh, Brian Smith finds uh, Colum Ratty they have the situation well under control Kieran Clavin in possession surrounded by O'Mahony's players fouls of the referee didn't seem like that to me Eugene Gorry with the free and the ball breaks to Damien Doonan again. What a fine game Damien Doonan, or Derek Doonan has had. Paul Mallon slipping, failing to gain possession. And Jarlath Hughes says thank you very much. Jinxie working very, very hard as well. And the ball crosses the sideline. Another line ball to Summerhill. Eugene Gorry takes it to Noel Young Noel Young being chased by David Nelson sends in a hopeful lob the ball breaks in front of the goal Kieran McNeilis John uh, John Lyon shot blocked down still Summerhill on the attack I know Brian Riley oh a heavy tackle there on Derek Doonan a free out a sliding tackle a late sliding tackle on Derek Doonan and a free out to Navan O'Mahony's just over three minutes remaining and surely now just three minutes separate Navan O'Mahony's from their fourth title in a row Jinxie Beggy lets the ball slip but the conditions are very greasy so you'll excuse him that lapse a free well held by Alan Riley heavily tackled uh, surely the referee is going to give him the advantage. Yes. A free out to Alan Riley. Well held under pressure. A fine performance by Navan O'Mahony's. Playing for 40 minutes with only 14 men. Way blocked down once again by Jinxie Beggy. Well, he hasn't let Parry Glines come forward to the same extent as he did in the second half of the replay. <laughs> Breen O'Grady leaving the ball to Brian Riley. <laughs> Joe Tallon urging his charges on. Joe Tallon responsible for having these lads in such fine shape today. Alan with the 
free looking for Finno finds Finno Finno tackled from behind no free says the referee Mick Lyons coming forward looking for Willie Shaw and finding him oh man he's looking for a late consolation score as we have played over a minute of stoppage time Stephen McNally flicks the ball into the middle John Lyons looking for a way through no way past and Colin Ratty clears it with his trusty left boot towards Paul Mallon well held by Paul Mallon one of the few clean catches of this game today and a long kick into space Eugene Gorry has possession but it doesn't matter what he does with it now Mick Lyons has possession but Navaramanis have won their fourth title in a row their 15th in all and Colin Ratty will now have the honour of going forward to receive the Keegan Cup and Joe Castles a, such a great servant of this club in his 11th county final will receive his 8th senior football medal at club record